Holy cow, everybody. Welcome to D-Mike Plays and the World's Pokemon. This brand new game, which I alluded to sort of subtly, but not really at all. Who's excited for this? This game actually just came out recently, a few days ago. And uh, yeah, I typically wouldn't want to do brand new games on this channel just because I don't want to be that guy. I've seen some YouTubers who make content. They play the newest and greatest games to just kind of attract people's attention and they try to power through it but I like to play games that I enjoy instead and this is one of my favorites well I don't know yet but it might be I've played the original one when I was a child so hopefully this one's good too looks to be pretty faithful to the original so hopefully you guys are ready for a trip here through the land of Sinnoh spoilers Wonder who this crazy creature could be with Professor Rowan. Keeping with the theme motif of professors being named after plants or trees, which I think is great. So what does he do? Uh, look incredibly dapper for one, absolutely. He's a researcher. So let's tell him about ourselves. So here you go. We've got options. Um, I don't remember what these characters' names are, but they do have actual names. When you choose the male character, the female character's name will be whatever the game has, you know, built in for it. Or if you choose the female one, it's the male one, etc., etc. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just choose Numero Uno. That's, I guess, the one that sort of looks closest to us. I don't have blue eyes, but whatever. And of course, what is our name? Because Professor Rowan doesn't know who the heck we are. Let's go ahead and toss in a good D mic. That's us. A little bit of weird lag that I'm experiencing. That's fine. Our name is D mic. You betcha. Yes, it is a fine name. It's actually the finest name. Thank you. It's passed on from my ancestors. It's a family name. And we have our friend here, Tried and True. This game's actually really nice because some of the other games they have rivals that are kind of mischievous or rude. Not this one. This one's actually kind of fun and. Your rival is actually kind of your buddy, and I think that's really fun. He's he's competitive too, but he's not rude about it, so no jerks in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. And his name is Barry. That's the canon name for this blonde-headed headed fellow. I can't talk. But it is time. The time has come. Our grand adventure where we send children into the wilderness. Who's excited for that? Everybody's excited for that. And we're going to learn something about ourselves. So this is an interpersonal journey. Make sure we do our stretches before we leap into the world of Pokemon, everybody. Who's excited for this? I already asked that. But first, conflict. I'm not entirely sure. This is actually, as far as I know, like the majority of what I've seen for the first few minutes that I've played this, everything is going to be very blind, by the way. Blind in terms of this game I've played, the original. Um, is very faithful, and I still don't Having played the original, and this one, I don't know what this has to do with anything. But we soon find out that uh, D-Mike here loves to stand very close to televisions and uh, potentially harm his eyesight. So thanks to Jubilife TV. Okay. So here it is. Give yourself a moment to just soak in this tune. This is the Twin Leaf. The Starting Town song. It's very near and dear to my heart. I played this game a lot as a child. And uh, yeah, I'll go more into the nostalgia as we play. But um, as you can see already, character designs are very cute. They kind of went with the kind of Japanese cartoony kind of chibi look, which I think is really great. The big head and small body. I think it's very adorable. And it kind of gives you Link's Awakening vibes. I don't know if I'd necessarily say the aesthetic is on par with Link's Awakening, but it's not too far off. Not too far off. And our character is obviously very privileged. They have a flat screen TV, a Nintendo Switch, and a laptop. And I believe that they're supposed to be like, I don't know, 10 years old? I think that's kind of when you start out on your Pokemon adventure. So there you go. You've learned some very basic core knowledge about what it means to be a Pokemon trainer. The TV is turned off. So this game is very self-aware. Thank you for that. And this is the Nintendo Switch. I don't actually have the red and blue Joy-Cons. I don't know if that's something they really wanted to push or not, but I don't have those. We have a very cozy looking bed, which we apparently can just walk into. 
It's very nice. Take a little snooze. But now is not the time for snoozing. Now is the time for adventuring. Let's see if we can... Okay, so we have learned the X button opens the menu and it wants us to head downstairs. <laughs> the game is very aggressive. You will head downstairs. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is change a couple of these settings. Um, maybe just the one for now, yeah. I just want the tech speed to be fast. I think that in some of these, it can be kind of chunky and slow and I don't really like that. You gotta go fast, right? So head downstairs or else, or you'll get kneecapped in the middle of this adventure. So let's go ahead and interact with mom and her beautiful bob haircut. I think she's kind of wearing like a kimono almost. She has a big bow around her waist. So thankfully, mom is here to fill us in on, on Barry. Apparently being in, into some kind of shenanigans. Uh, apparently mom is also very keen on keeping the floor nice and clean. Look how well whacked this floor is. Like you can, you can see yourself in it. Let's go ahead and check and see what she's been watching on TV. The contest digest, whatever that is. So, contests were something that were introduced in the in Generation Three Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, and they're all about using your Pokemon in different ways than you would normally from battling to kind of give a little bit of variety to that. And I think that's interesting. I don't know how much in depth I'll go into that. This isn't meant to be like a super con comprehensive let's play. It's not gonna be one where I like grind a bunch and do a bunch of training and all this stuff. It's not meant to be that. This is just meant to be like the other Let's Plays, very cash and fun and laid back. So our mom is ever present to warn us. Maybe that's an apron. I can't tell. But uh, she has pockets. It's very nice. I'm sure women appreciate pockets. She warns us not to go into, into tall grass. So that's a nice warning. Very handy. And here we are in Twin Leaf Town. Looks like the sun is setting a bit. And I believe the game is meant to be uh, indicative of what time of day it is when you play. So I think that's really nice. I believe it has day and night cycles. So technology blows this guy away. He likes to be blown, that's cool. You know, technology is astounding. I agree. There's an older woman here. That's right, and it appears that the Pokemon professor was on a bit of a sabbatical. That's interesting. And she wants a cute Pokemon. Well, little girl, Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and go get one yourself. Pokemon don't grow on trees. Actually, some of them do grow on trees. Okay, so let's just talk to everybody. <laughs> some wild Pokemon will attack you and some will become your friends by force or else. That's how it's gonna be. Okay. This young lad. We sure are tight, tight, tight. That's right. That's a friendship built on a firm foundation. And here is Barry's house. Let's go ahead and step out. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I just, I love, I know some, this is kind of polarizing for some people, but I, I love this art design already. It's it's too cute. Barry looks fantastic. The player looks fantastic. And he wants to go to the lake. Maybe go for a little dip. And he's gonna fine us one million whatevers if we're late. Wouldn't want that. But wait, there's more. Oh geez, oh geez, Barry ever forgetful. Let's go ahead and barge into Barry's house, uninvited. Talk to his mom, who also looks like a child. Okay. Are you looking for him? He literally just came back inside. I have no idea where he went. There's only one set of stairs and another room in this house, which makes me wonder. If you look in the original player's house, there's just the one bed. There's the stairs and the one bed. So like, does mom sleep in the kitchen? That feels kind of sexist, Nintendo. Get your, get your act together. This is 2021. All right. Okay, so Barry has increased the fine tenfold because he's a bit of a jerk, but he's a lovable jerk. He's not like the blue or Gary from the original Pokemons or the, or the, uh, is it gold? The red haired kid from uh, gold and silver? I don't know. I am looking for Barry. It's really interesting that everybody's kind of giving me this heads up. They're like, all right, you know, do you need Barry? Are you looking for Barry? We're not codependent on Barry game, okay? Back off. Once again, more beautiful music. I might have the music cranked up a little bit more in this Let's Play just because I love it so much and it's very nostalgic for me. They did a great job covering all of this, so. But Barry has seen the news report about the Red Gyarados. 
and he wants to see if our lake has something like that too. So we will head to the lake, which I just happen to so coincidentally know is this way, the Verity Lakefront. I think that from what I've seen from like the, the early photos of this versus to now, I think they've come a long way with the way that they've designed this and the aesthetic is a lot better. So kudos to the design studio who made this and for sticking to it. All right, in a few moments, I'm going to offend a lot of people. So here we go. And I'm listening to this in headphones as I record, but uh, it sounds fantastic. If you can listen to this in headphones to hear my beautiful voice as well as this beautiful music. Has some nice bass to it. Something appears to be different than it was before, but we have seen the lake. <laughs> I just love how abrupt all this is. We're leaving. She just wants to reminisce lakeside. He's like, nope, I have no time for this. Yeah, great. He comes all the way back and he's like, right to business. Professor Rowan does not mess around. Also, their walk cycles are so cute. My goodness. Let us get out of my way, children. And like, I'm not entirely sure what the ages of the characters are supposed to be. I would say like, you know, maybe like almost teenagers, like tweenagers or whatever that word is, um, or teenagers, whatever this is. But I just think it's kind of weird that like you have a small child with an old man conducting research by like, call me crazy, but I don't know how I feel about that. As well-renowned as he is. But Barry's got the heebie-jeebies a little bit. He wasn't sure what was that. That they were up to, but uh, hey, you see they're slightly out of focus in the background. There's a little piece of luggage here that Barry is keen on investigating. It appears that Professor Rowan, quote unquote, accidentally left his briefcase. We could return it, but instead we're going to be attacked by Pokemons. Oh, I just, I don't know. This is meant to be like, like kind of intense and like, oh my gosh, what's happening? But it's just, I don't know, it's kind of cheesy. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a quick peek at all of these Pokemon and see what our options are for our starter. I've already chosen one, sorry everybody. Um, but you'll at least get to see what they are. And I don't have like, I'm not gonna cut away to like any cool detailed cards, I don't have time to make that. But we'll talk about them a little bit. So the first option is the grass starter. Every Pokemon game for the most part, I believe, in perpetuity has had a grass starter, a fire starter, and a water starter. So your grass starter in this game is Turtwig, clearly a turtle if you couldn't figure that out. The fire starter is Chimchar, monkey. And then your water starter is Piplup, the penguin. Of all the Pokemon games, aside from like red and blue and yellow, which have the, you know, the original three, you know, Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur, and Pikachu. Uh, besides those which are just legendary, you know, not literally legendaries, but they are legendary in terms of the canon. Um, those are great. Those are timeless. But these are probably my second favorites. And I think it's just because they, they're all pretty good and they all have a lot of personality. Um, but in playing Pokemon, my very first Pokemon game when I was a child was Pokemon Red. I was very enamored by Charmander and ever since then it's set me on a crash course for fire Pokemon. And we're going to choose Chimchar. Now, I do have an ulterior motive for choosing Chimchar, beyond the fact that I just think Chimchar is great, is that in this game, if I remember in the original, the Sinnoh decks wasn't very kind to fire Pokemon. There weren't a ton of choices. So having a fire Pokemon early is nice. So we're gonna go ahead and choose Chimchar. And this fight in and of itself is very basic and simple. It is... You know, you, you have two options right now for your Pokemon. It's not technically yours yet, but you have the ability to do a physical attacking move, Scratch, or you have a debuff move, in this case, Leer, which Leer, because I'm not going to use it, is used to lower the defense of, your, of the adversary by one stage. You can do that up to six times, which is, I think is pretty interesting. But we destroyed this Juggernaut of a Pokemon Starly. Very scary. And we get ourselves our first round of experience points for the Chimchar we stole. So that's very good. 
Chimchar did rock, and it seems like Barry has chosen the Pokemon stronger to ours to counter us, the Penguin Piplup, the water type. So Barry is okay with casual theft, but it appears that we are not alone. Her name is Don, the researcher, the assistant to the researcher of the professor. And, uh, oops. Sorry. Oh no, we've gotten ourselves in quite the pickle. She's gonna go ahead and magically make the briefcase disappear and run away from us. What was that about indeed? I don't know what's going on. That's right. We could be in trouble, Barry. What do we do? Well, we get the heck out of the grass, that's for sure. Okay. Aw, oh, Barry has a heart after all. See, his ethos isn't completely broken. He's got a decent moral compass. Aw, oh, Barry. That's sweet. So he knows that we need to return the Pokemon. It's not ours. Oh, uh-oh. The fix is in. Oh boy, Professor Roan is not going to be happy. I like how they gave them kind of, um, like, kind of real aesthetic for, like, the hair, the design, but then, like, the eyebrows look like they're drawn on. That's kind of silly looking, but that's okay. I'm not going to criticize this one as much. I'm going to try to just enjoy it. Enjoy Pokemons. That's right. So he's like, guys, I have no time for any of you, especially not my... My assistant, he's like, get out of here, leave me alone. Yeah. Oh, Barry, used to being punished, perhaps? Well, he didn't want the Pokemon back, I guess it's ours. And go home we will. We're gonna fade to black and wind up back at home with mom. Who has made a nice batch of cookies for us. I like that nobody in this game seems to know what's happening. Like, everybody is super confused and just unaware of everything. But she seems to know Professor Rowan. Perhaps on a first name basis. I don't actually know what his first name is. He's also quite intimidating. He was! But she thinks we should go to Sand Gem and go visit him. Maybe give him a little what's what on while we had to defend ourselves. Maybe you shouldn't leave your briefcase in very alluring grass by a beautiful lakefront, Professor Rowan, huh? Stop trying to blame the victims here. But we get one of the best items in the game, the running shoes. We can go speedy quick, tilt the left stick firmly, and dash about faster than ever before. Wonderful. I don't think we can take these off. I think this is like a permanent thing. But in the other games, when you had the running shoes, it was a permanent thing. So as far as I know, I don't... I think it's a key item that we can't take off. Go ahead and check. Okay, so it's not even a thing. It's just a game mechanic now. Okay. So we're going to head here and make our way to Sand Gem Town. Enter the... Our first tall grass. That's right. Just, just stay out of the tall grass. If you don't want to get into trouble, just stay out of trouble. Great advice. And if you're getting low on HP, heading home, we'll sort that out. I believe that uh, we're healed. Yeah, so thanks to mom, we were able to share some cookies with Chimchar, which I won't, it's not gonna stay as Chimchar. But we will encounter our first battle here. I wonder who this could be. <gasps> it's another Starlink. That's what we were attacked by earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and just say it now. Um, there's going to be some ways that I intend to play this game. And one of the ways that I intend to play this game is that I'm not going to fight wild Pokemon. And what I mean by that is I'm not going to fight wild Pokemon with the intent to gain experience. I will fight wild Pokemon to build them onto my team, but that's the best it's going to be. I feel like grinding is kind of unnecessary. And this game is easy enough that the trainer battles usually provide enough experience that grinding isn't necessarily something I need to do. I mean, I will go into grass and I'll try to find Pokemon, etc. But that's situational. 
So that's just one of the first kind of house rules that I'm going to be playing by. And as I do more, I will explain the others. So I'll let them happen as they happen. And here is Barry lacking spatial awareness, as he always does. And it seems like he's gotten to know Professor Roman and given him a fair shake. Some benefit of the doubt. Very kind of Barry to not judge a book by its trench coat. But it seems like Barry is, he's just got, he's got a different motor. He's kind of like the uh, Energizer Bunny. Just always, always got somewhere to be. He's always buzzing. I know people like that. I respect that. It can be kind of exhausting sometimes though, I will admit. And here is Professor Rowan's theme, like we heard in the intro to the game, which is really nice. And of course it's happy. Anybody would be happy to spend time with D-Mike. And Professor Rowan, ever the gener generous gentleman, he has provided us with Chimchar as a gift. And yes, we would like to give it a nickname. So Chimchar is our first Pokemon. And I have a weird naming convention that I like to do. I've played other types of Pokemon games where sometimes I'll leave just kind of the default type of Pokemon. But in this case, because it's a Let's Play and because it's fun, I, I would love to have people suggest names, but you know, this channel's not quite there yet, but once it gets there someday, maybe we'll be able to do that. For now, I'm going to name all the Pokemon based on the gender specified, male or female, with a name that I've just randomly thought of, or maybe I'll do a random name generator in the future. But for now, I've already picked out this one. I thought of this well in advance. So our first Pokemon, the Chimchar, the young lad who's going to be joining us on our adventure, it's going to be Charlie. And yes, we are certainly happy with an illustrious nickname like that. I love alliteration, by the way, so that's probably going to be a big part of it. And it seems like we've already kind of got the intuition on what it's like to be a Pokemon trainer. Appreciate that. He's, he's trusting us. He's put some faith in us. So clearly, Professor Rowan sees big things. Yeah. So, here we go. Here is the main, you know, soup du jour of Pokemon games, and each, each one of them is, is a little different, but kind of the, the crux of what you're going to be doing in every game is that you're entrusted by this old person to be a child going into the wilderness. So we're going to be given the Pokedex, where here in Sinnoh, we can record data on the Pokemon that we see. That involves seeing them, catching them, etc. In our case, we are not going to be catching a ton of them because this is not a completionist let's play, just to warn you. But when you do see Pokemon through wild encounters or through trainer battles, they get registered to the Pokedex and you can quote unquote complete it that way. So Dawn, thinking she's high society. She already has a Pokedex. Wants to rub it in our face. So, don't worry, Don. We'll show you what's what. Okay. So our grand adventure began earlier and now it re-begins. And so Don was the original owner of the Turtwig. Oh, apparently she has her own Turtwig, I guess, but... Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Don, for introducing yourself a thousand times. We've got stuff to do, m'lady. That's right. So I don't know if Don is supposed to be older than the player character or if you choose Don, if the male character is supposed to be older. I'm not entirely sure how any of this works, to be completely honest, but I don't think that really matters. But now that we've done our due diligence of meeting the professor, we can come outside and get ready for our journey, but not before... Dawn delays us again. She is not going to hesitate to tutorialize the beginning part of this game. For those of you who are new to Pokemon, this one is a remake of the original Pokemon Diamond from the early 2000s. So the Pokemon Center and the Pokemon Mart were separate buildings. Back in my day, Pokemon Centers and Marts were different buildings. Um, usually they're in the same building now, but... Pokemon, centers of where you heal, marts, buy items, etc. 
But because we're um, a peasant, a little peon, we're not able to buy as much merchandise as Don can, blah, 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 whatever. Okay. Well, Don, maybe we want to buy as much stuff. And it appears that she thinks that we should go back and talk to mom and heal at a Pokemon Center. So Don's just gonna get the heck out of here and leave us to be. So we will go and heal up at that Pokemon Center next time. So thanks for joining me for the first episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I've been D-Mike, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!